Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Ram. I'm an assistant professor at University of Massachusetts, Boston. This work is in collaboration with colleagues at uh, University of Oklahoma and the Advanced Radar Research Center there. Uh, talk title is Implementation of a Software-Defined Antenna and Radio Test System for Congested Spectral Environments. But really, the focus is on that test system. So uh, developing a multi-node kind of test configuration in this collaboration. Uh, our groups bringing our background in GNU Radio and some of the SDR concepts. Oklahoma's got a lot of this background in these reconfigurable antennas, and the idea is to bring it all together uh, and just come up with some stuff that we can do some interesting testing in the future. Uh, so just a little bit about the, uh, the colleagues and people working on this project. Um, Rosalind Elliott, our colleagues at Oklahoma. Um, these are my students here and myself from UCAN Lab at UMass Boston. Big picture is that uh, they're doing a lot of the cool antenna stuff, uh, very different scales and size of antennas, reconfigurable antennas, dynamic antennas, et cetera. Um, our background is non-conventional SDR stuff, probably familiar, or you might have seen uh, Christopher's talk yesterday on our work with optical wireless communications. And with that in mind, that kind of highlights the fact that my background is optical wireless communications, so I'm probably the last person you want talking about an antenna because my antenna is a LED transmitter and a photosensor receiver. Uh, so just kind of merging these two things together, but the big idea is uh, kind of the benefits of GNU Radio and some of these conferences and collaborations kind of bringing uh, concepts together. So um, quick outline, motivation, some background concepts, a little bit about what they're doing in Oklahoma, the reconfigurable antennas, some of the hardware that they've built up and are developing, and the software that they use to control that, uh, some of our work with GNU Radio and the, the tools we're, we're using within uh, the GNU Radio framework, primarily XML RPC and ZMQ. Um, and GRECon, which I'll point out, is, is not an out-of-tree library. It's just a, our open source GitHub repository with some of the scripts and code tied to this project. And then we'll talk a little bit about the integration and how we're bringing these two things together to build up a test system. So background motivation common here, uh, RF spectrum environments are congested. We have a lot of stuff, particularly sub-6 gigahertz, what's going on there. Important um, concept to consider is noise interference mitigation in the analog domain so we don't uh, run into aliasing issues and uh, stuff that have a harder time getting rid of in, after uh, sampling. Um, and then the benefits of frequency reconfigurable antennas, which is the, the concept we're talking about here. Uh, tunable antennas, basically applying a unique solution to this problem, giving us this flexibility, allows for change in operating frequency on the fly, so some of that dynamic control. Uh, tunability in this concept then gives us this larger operating bandwidth while also providing some narrow band filtering. So moving the center point around the, the range of interest um, and giving us this frequency of agility to uh, intentionally avoid some interference or other characteristics that come up. Um, for my side, it's more of a SDR software motivations. Uh, the, the point and the interest in this collaboration led to this idea that, okay, tunable antennas are there, you got some extra control over there. What eventually or essentially it does is it gives us this extra dimension of software control uh, to impact our front end hardware. And then uh, kind of following some of the uh, analog and, and to digital process over the years. So analog signal processing, full RF, analog RF, RF side, uh, adding D DSP and, and kind of the benefits of what led us to software-defined radio, configuration of front-end hardware, your, your mixer, your uh, amplifiers, and all these kind of characteristics in here. But all of these things have that static antenna at the front. Uh, that's kind of the, the limiting factor at the end. What this goal of this project is working on is adding that reconfiguration to the antenna piece uh, ultimately linked to software control throughout the entire framework of the software-defined radio. Right. And uh, again, why are reconfigurable antennas important? Why do we actually care about this part? Well, that antenna is ultimately the, the first point of contact between the system, or the signal out there and the, the system that we're building and coming up with. So the uh, it concerns and the, the characteristics of what happens there ultimately propagates through our system. I also point out this image because uh, my, my colleagues working on antennas primarily look at the system this way. You have your antenna, you have your RF front end, and then there's the, the rest of the system. Um, so rest of the system actually is where I'm kind of, our focus is and kind of building up this stuff here. So antenna research often focuses on those, those analog characteristics and isolation and then passes us off and says, this is great, go build up the rest of the system. Um, our intention here is that integrating the tools and the stuff that they're developing in university research in basically lab settings um, with the antennas is to then integrate uh, SDR software characteristics and capabilities that we're all familiar with here uh, with these reconfigurable in, uh, antennas to do improved testing, broader scale testing on the higher level impacts of 
things through modulated data streams. And ultimately, uh, goal is to come up with more of an automated test environment, multi-node system, um, where we can look at the impacts of different interferers, interference conditions, and then tie in signal processing characteristics to the antenna's actual parameters. Um, so basic antennas, right, horn antenna, uh, vertical vert antenna, the, the stuff we commonly use with our uh, uh, SDRs, right, static antennas. Goal is can we come up with something that's more reconfigurable, tuning this around. And as I mentioned, this is not my expertise. If you want to talk about optical wireless transmitters and receivers, that's, you can come talk to me. But this is background from Oklahoma, some of the tools and the equipment that they built up. Uh, long story short, with this antenna, you basically move that uh, conductive disc up and down um, using the actuator that they have in there, so the, the control on that to uh, essentially tune the center frequency. And then they have some other uh, interesting hardware with, uh, framed as fill antennas, so you get filtering and filtering flexibility with that as well. All right. At the end of the day, um, we, they noted that uh, the center frequency, basically that tunability and where you tune it, also uh, impacts the antenna's response. So or kind of in conjunction, jointly uh, modifying your signal processing uh, characteristics or your signal's characteristics uh, is something we want to do together in this concept. The software that they work with, again, this is some um, mechanical actuators to kind of move that thing around. Uh, that disk around. So what they're working with is this new scale technology software uh, called Pathways. Basically, it's the control software for these small scale components. Uh, there's a manual control mode. That's primarily what they were working with for their initial testing. Um, and then there's a scripting mode that gives you kind of a, basically generates an XML uh, code that highlights their script, load and repeat and uh, replay a bunch of script scenarios. Ultimately, this ended up being the, the brains of this whole system where we can interact with uh, some of the GNU radio tools and add the SDR into the loop, uh, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, from there and the, the hardware software inter interface, ultimately that, that uh, separation with the disk is what tunes the, the center frequency. Um, the, the motion is operated with that new scale pathway software and there's sort of this calibration step, so they come up with a calibration to tune their, figure out the, uh, the gap size that leads to the specific tuning. Uh, they use that calibration script from, from their prior testing to generate the, the values that go into this pathway script, execute it, and then uh, move the actuator to the target position, which in ultimately tunes the antenna. All right, tying back to GNU Radio and, and some of the SDR applications. So now we're looking at creating this test environment, so interferers, uh, your transmitters, your um, receiver with this antenna, tying it all together in this multi-node system. So that's where XML RPC and ZMQ comes into play, essentially, if you're not familiar with this, these tools, XMLRPC basically is your remote parameter control for distributed GNU radio flow graphs. So you drop this XMLRPC server into your flow graph and you can control the parameters nice and easy from a Python code uh, and some other node. Uh, ZMQ, same idea on the reverse. So now you get your remote access to values or measurements within GNU radio. So we're using the uh, publish subscribe model for that. And then the other tool that is sort of a tool, not really a tool, GRRecon is just this open source repository that we have that's basically the starting point for all the, tool, the, the code and the software that we're putting into this. Uh, a lot of it is simulation right now, and then the, the new radio flow graphs that are integrating, um, that we're using with integrating with that pathway scripts that are also posted uh, for this joint configuration. And this is what we'll be building on in the future as well. So to start off, just kind of thinking of a simulation to, to show the basic idea. This is a relatively naive uh, model in GNU Radio, but modeling sort of the analog front end in some ways to recognize the potential impacts of these filters. So we have a, a simple carrier modulator, kind of very naive, as I mentioned. But the, the takeaway from this is that uh, we're using simulation sample rates. So a nice benefit of DSP or SDR or GNU radio tools is that the number, the value in that block is just a number, so we can slow it down and what we're actually looking at, but we can see some impacts by uh, applying to our different filters and different characteristics. So we model the antenna responses into two different paths. Uh, we model uh, basically your analog to digital conversion with decimating filters there. And then we have XML, RPC, and ZMQ, as I mentioned, to kind of push values to change from an external script and pull those values out um, with ZMQ. And then initially configured with local host, we can move this to something that's remote and then decouple the two parts of this to have our full configuration. So uh, initial script, relatively simple to start. Um, I'll start running this and you can kind of see the basic idea of the script. We have the, the uh, terminal there, ran the external program, 
communicating through local host and doing your radio. All we're doing is taking the uh, top two blocks or sort of the, uh, the full RF view or simulated view. We're sweeping a tone through, very naive as I mentioned, uh, but the idea is sweeping this tone through, seeing where you run into what is essentially aliasing, right? So the broadband antenna response of a, of a simple basic antenna versus the narrow band response with um, more filtering ca capabilities, and it is coming up with some simulations that sweep either tones or sweep an interfering signal across the band in some way. Let's skip through this to show the next one. Uh, main point we're trying to show here is then the frequency agility. So now if we take that um, signal of interest and when the interfering signal comes into our range, we can actually move or change where our um, component is. So just uh, jumping around the spectrum and more intelligently. Uh, main difference is that as we move through things, right, we can somewhere around here, switch the carrier, jump things around. You're moving your carrier and your, 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 your signal around with the basic antenna, but the broad response of the antenna um, still shows up with some of that aliasing. Uh, moving the filtenna's response around, cut some of that without even considering any of your uh, filters on the actual RF front end. Uh, I'm gonna come back to this in a second. I wanna describe the architecture first, so how we sort of scaled this up. Uh, and what we set up with the, the team at Oklahoma. So I mentioned uh, New Scale Pathways as the software that configures their uh, reconfigurable antenna. Uh, you can see down in the, the control PC at the bottom, that's where their pathway software is running. Essentially that can talk to that reconfigurable antenna uh, via network connectivity there. Um, in, in any way there. Uh, it also incorporates within that control script or that control computer Python script that essentially talks out to the, to the transmitter and receiver to change your signal processing characteristics and uh, modify or update the, the uh, SDRs, the USRPs up there. Um, putting this all together, in Pathways you can call out those external scripts. So you're essentially creating the script in uh, Pathways that does your reconfigurable antenna configuration setting, modifies and changes the signal processing characteristics, and then loops through that for all the different test scenarios of interest, adding interference, removing interference, all these characteristics. Uh, going forward, this is sort of the direction we're scaling it to, trying to get us to a uh, broader testing environment, and again, uh, coming up with a bunch of different test scenarios to observe how this might actually impact uh, this, the, the modulated data performance, a full kind of communication link performance in a system like this, comparing your basic antennas to some of the different reconfigurable antenna hardware that they have. Uh, I'm trying to think what my timing is here. I've got good time. Okay, so I'll go back to this one for a second. This is basically our setup before we have access to um, those reconfigurable antennas. This is our setup at, at uh, UMass, basically hand, before we hand off the software to them. So, oops, I don't know if that video is gonna play going backwards. Uh, so in this case, we just have two uh, Linux boxes running GNU Radio on those sides, the Windows PC running um, Python script out to control those, and we're just cycling through a couple different characteristics to test uh, presence of interference, absence of interference, uh, presence of interference and signal, and look at those scenarios. The idea is now handing off this script to the team at Oklahoma. They build it up into their system, incorporate uh, this into that Pathways software, and come up with something where we are here, which is the uh, outcome of last week, kind of merging all this together to, to get it to actually do something, but we haven't done a ton of actual testing yet, but I'll give you the basic outcome here after I start this video. Uh, basically, they're starting that Pathways script in the software, we're showing that it's running GNU Radio, uh, or the Python script to call out and configure, and you can't really see it in the video here, it looks like, but uh, running that flow graph on the left, or changing the parameters in that flow graph on the left remotely, and then as it goes through the script, it's basically changing the interference characteristics. Uh, ultimately, what it comes down to the bottom, and you'll see in a very brief second, if you watch that antenna right around now, or shortly, it will change that location. There it goes. Um, yeah, so that's kind of merging it all together, demonstrating the, the connectivity of these two different tools, bringing it together, and now this opens up um, the testing capabilities for what we want to do going forward to actually see how this impacts um, some of the signal characteristics and ultimately the, the signal chain characteristics. All right, so main outcomes from this work so far, again, early stage collaboration, kind of bringing these two groups together, uh, starting with GNU Radio Simulation just to see and demonstrate what they wanted to 
um, work with integrating GNU Radio with that new scale pathways software to get the combined or joint configuration of the front end antenna and the um, signal processing characteristics and then where we're going from here is to improve some of these testing scenarios, uh, extend the script scenarios within pathways to come through a bunch more um, test character or test scenarios, implement modulated data stream stuff we've done with the optical wireless set, set up and system before within their system and then ultimately look at how um, your packet rate, back, uh, packet error rate and other uh, higher level performance measurements show up in this system. That's it. Uh, all I got there. Thank you so much, and thanks to all the GNU Radio folks for organizing and for all this conference stuff. Thanks. We've got another uh, 15 grueling minutes of questions. He's got a question for our speaker. I think I only got two minutes, right? <laughs> Hopefully, I only had a 15-minute talk because my block was only 15 minutes. But are there any questions? Just kind of a, how did you happen to get hooked up with folks in Oklahoma? It was just like... It was, a, yeah, it was an interesting connection through a colleague of mine who does antennas work at UMass, a uh, new colleague, Dr. Rule, at uh, Oklahoma. So we started, they were talking about um, wanting to get beyond just looking at that, the, the signal characteristics and do more performance measurements up there at the higher layer. So they were trying to figure it out, and I had worked with uh, Dr. Patel at... Um, uh, UMass previously with some of this SDR stuff introduced and kind of went back and forth. She said, hey, uh, the guys, the other guys over in this group are actually doing this with the optical system. You guys have some non-conventional uh, front-end hardware too. Maybe it merges together nicely. Great. And then they just put it in a box and send it to you and... They haven't sent the intent at all. The, oh, the idea is okay. we're You're developing the software, the software kind of shipping it oh, over okay. and uh, posting everything on the repositories and then they pull and, and see how it works on their end and, and going back and forth with that. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks.